Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 7 of the chapter Hydrocarbons. In this video, I am going to start talking about the methods of preparation of alkanes. Alkanes can basically be just extracted from petroleum and natural gas. We know petroleum is a mixture of thousands of alkanes and natural gas is basically a mixture of methane, ethane and propane. So you mainly get your, these are the main sources from which you can get your alkanes. Other than this, if you have to prepare alkanes, there are three different sources from which you can, uh, you can prepare them by modifying those molecules. The first source is from unsaturated hydrocarbons, that is from alkenes and alkynes. The second method is that you prepare it from alkyl halides. And the third method of preparation or the source would be carboxylic acids. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the first two. That is, we will be preparing alkanes from unsaturated hydrocarbons and we'll understand how alkanes are prepared from alkyl halides. So let us begin. From unsaturated hydrocarbons, how can you prepare alkanes? What is an unsaturated hydrocarbon? Take a look at this molecule. A hydrocarbon in which there are two carbon atoms in which a double or a triple bond is present and in the previous videos when we were discussing about the different categories of hydrocarbons I explained to you how a bond carbon being tetravalent forms four bonds and usually it forms those bonds by forming a chain between the carbon atoms and the rest of the valencies that are to be fulfilled are fulfilled using hydrogen atoms Whenever you have a double bond or a triple bond between two carbon atoms, the hydrocarbon becomes unsaturated. So if you have to turn, and the only difference between an unsaturated and saturated hydrocarbon is that a saturated hydrocarbon or alkane would have all single bonds of carbon atoms. So if these multiple bonds can be removed and in place of that, instead of carbon-carbon having a double or a triple bond, if we could turn all of them into single bonds by adding hydrogens, then we can get the alkane from the alkene. And you have studied the chapter redox reactions. So you know whenever you are adding hydrogen to something, you are reducing it. So basically you are carrying this, these reactions are reduction reactions. So from unsaturated hydrocarbons, how do we get alkanes? We get alkanes by the addition of dihydrogen, that is H2. Dihydrogen to alkenes or alkynes in the presence of finely divided catalysts like platinum, palladium and nickel. Platinum, palladium and nickel are finely divided, which means they're kind of powdered. And they are powdered. The reason why we use these as catalysts is because these metals, hydrogen is a gas. And in order to kind of stabilize it and make it active for reaction, to kind of give it a surface for reaction, these metals are used. The metals, they adsorb the hydrogen on their surface. Adsorption, I've explained adsorption to you. Adsorption is just the absorption on the surface and not within the entire bulk of the substance. Yet, we are already taking finely divided metals, that is almost powdered metals. We are taking these powdered metals in order to increase the surface area so that all the hydrogen that is present would get adsorbed on whatever surface of the metal is available to it. Once it is adsorbed there, it is now gets ready to react with the alkene or the alkyne. So the platinum, palladium or nickel do not actually participate in the reaction. Therefore, they act as catalysts. So we say that it is done by adding dihydrogen to alkenes or alkynes in the presence of finely divided catalysts like platinum, palladium or nickel. This process is also known as hydrogenation because hydrogen is being added and hydrogenation is nothing but production. Platinum and palladium, they can catalyze the reaction even at room temperature. They are more efficient. Nickel is not as efficient. Therefore, this reaction, if you're using nickel, you will have to raise the temperature of the reaction. Warm nickel or it requires some heating. You'll have to heat up the nickel and then nickel will adsorb the hydrogen and keep it there and make it activate it for reaction. 
So we say that these metals adsorb, adsorption is only on the surface, adsorb hydrogen and activate the HH bond for reaction with. They activate it so that the HH bond breaks and instead the hydrogens, they form the bonds with carbon atoms. So now these three reactions explain how it is done. This is ethene. Ethene has a double bond here. You add hydrogen to it and the hydrogen HH bond will break and how will it happen when it is adsorbed on platinum or palladium or nickel, any one of these. And what will happen? The two hydrogens will separate out, this bond will break, one hydrogen will come and join this hydrogen, one hy uh, carbon and one hydrogen will come and join this carbon. Therefore, both of them will become CH3, single bond CH3. So CH3, CH3 is ethane. So ethene turns into ethane. An unsaturated hydrocarbon was reduced and with the help of its hydrogenation took place with the help of catalysts like platinum, palladium and nickel resulted in the formation of the corresponding alkane. Take here another example. Here you have propene. Propene reacts with hydrogen. Now these two carbons share a double bond. So one bond here will break with hydrogen in the presence of platinum, palladium, nickel. The two hydrogen atoms will come and join these two carbon atoms which were sharing a double bond. And therefore you'll get CH3, CH2, CH3. So you started with propene and you got propane. If instead you had propyne, that is an alkyne, CH3C triple bond CH, then instead of one hydrogen molecule where one hydrogen atom and one hydrogen atom will come and join and break one bond, then another molecule of hydrogen will come and join the two carbons, so breaking the other bond. Ultimately, two bonds will be breaken, broken and uh, the two hydrogens will come and add for every one bond that is broken. So first the third bond will break, Two hydrogen atoms will come and join here then this third another bond will break and two hydrogens will come and join here so you'll have CH3 CH2 CH2 or sorry CH2 and this is CH3 one H it already had and two more hydrogens have added so you have CH3 CH2 CH3 it becomes propane only in this case instead of one molecule of hydrogen since there is a double unsaturation there are two uh, bonds which are added to the single bond therefore those two bonds will have to be broken and you will get the corresponding alkane. So this was the first method that how do you prepare alkanes from uh, unsaturated hydrocarbons. Let us now come to the second source. The second source is you can get Hydro, uh, alkanes from alkyl halides also. Now alkyl halides except for fluorides, the alkyl fluorides that are formed they do not undergo reaction as easily. Fluorine generally is the extreme, uh, is the most um, or the smallest uh, halogen and it is the most electronegative atom in the entire uh, periodic table therefore its behavior is slightly it is very small in size also so its behavior is different from the rest of the halogens it is one extreme so other than the fluorides <coughs> if you have other halides the halogen is bigger it is possible to break that bond to remove the halogen so you can remove the halogen and replace the halogen with a hydrogen and if you do that, you will get the alkane instead of the alkyl halide. So Rx, that is uh, alkyl halides, all alkyl halides except for fluorides, on reduction, again what is happening in these reactions? Halogen is being removed. That is, we know all halogens are electronegative elements. So the electronegative atom is removed and hydrogen is added. Removal of electronegative element, addition of hydrogen addition of hydrogen is reduction and removal of electronegative element is also reduction. So this is again a reduction reaction where the halogen will be replaced by a hydrogen. So with this on reduction with and what is what, are, what do you uh, do it with? You do it with zinc in the presence of hydrochloric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid. So when you have this um, methyl chloride it reacts with hydrogen in the presence of zinc and dilute HCl and the reduction takes place chlorine is removed the HH bond is broken the CCl bond is broken and one Cl and one hydrogen get together to form HCl and one hydrogen which is left it takes the place of the chlorine 
in the molecule. So you get CH4. Now carbon was forming a bond with chlorine. Instead now it forms a bond with hydrogen. And the chlorine which is liberated combines with that remaining hydrogen to form HCl. So another example of the same kind, you have C2H5Cl, that is, uh, it, this is chloroethane. Chloroethane will also combine with hydrogen in the presence of zinc and HCl, and it will result in the formation of the corresponding alkane, that is C2H6 will be formed, and the chlorine will form HCl. One hydrogen takes the place of chlorine, and the chlorine goes and joins the other hydrogen to form HCl. Similarly, Third example, you have chloropropane. Chloropropane in the presence of hydrogen, uh, sorry, reacts with hydrogen in the presence of zinc and HCl to give you propane and HCl. The same reaction takes place, replacement of chlorine takes place by hydrogen. The other way how you can prepare the alkanes from alkyl halides is by a reaction which is known as Wurtz reaction. In by the reduction, simple reduction, what did we use? We used zinc and H positive. In Wurtz reaction, instead of using zinc and uh, H positive, we carry it out with the treatment of uh, treatment with sodium in the presence of dry ether. That is, the conditions of the reaction are different, and this reaction is known as a as Wurtz reaction. This is named after the scientist Wurtz. Now, what happens in this reaction? This is a little more interesting. Wurtz reaction leads to the, what was, what were we doing in all of these? We were replacing something with hydrogen. Here, we were replacing the multiple bond with hydrogen. Here, we were replacing the halogen with hydrogen. In this case, what happens? The halogen is removed, but from two molecules, and the two remaining pieces are joined together to result in the formation of the alkane. So let us just, I'll just read this out and then I'll explain it when I uh, do the examples. Alkyl halides on treatment with sodium in dry ethereal solution. They give, what does dry ethereal solution means? When it is a solution, how is it dry? Dry here refers to its being free of moisture. There is no water in it. The ether may be in, it is a solution, it may be mixed in another organic solvent, but it is not mixed with, it is free of moisture. There is no water. So, and why do you need a dry ethereal solution? Because sodium is a highly reactive metal. In the presence of the slightest moisture, sodium can have an explosive reaction. And we don't want that. Therefore, we use a dry ethereal medium and alkyl halides on treatment with sodium in dry ethereal solution, they give higher alkanes. When you say higher alkanes, an alkane which has more number of carbon atoms. In all of these, you saw that we took eth ethene, we got ethane. We took propene, we got propane. We took propyne, we got propyne. The number of carbon atoms in the product was the same as the hydrocarbon that we took. In this case, I told you that it will be, if you take methyl bromide or bromomethane, the bromo-bromo from both molecules will be removed and the methyl groups, they will join together to form ethane. So you started with methane, but you end up with a hydrocarbon with, uh, that is methyl bromide or bromomethane, but you ended up with a product or an alkane which had double the number of carbon atoms. So we say, so you get higher uh, alkyl, uh, you get higher alkanes with this. So alkyl halides on treatment with sodium in dry ethereal solution, they give higher alkanes and it is used to prepare alkanes containing even number of carbon atoms. Why would that be? Let us take this example. Why do you get products with even number of carbon atoms? Let us say I take a bromomethane. We carry out the reaction of bromomethane, two molecules of bromomethane, that is the minimum ratio, at least two. If you have make it react with sodium in the presence of dry ether, what happens? The sodium takes away the electronegative bromine, resulting in the formation of sodium bromide. And now the remaining methyl uh, groups on both the molecules, they come and join together to form, meth to form ethane. Now the original hydrocarbon had one carbon in it but the resultant alkane has two carbons so it is a higher alkane and do you see 
1 was an odd number here what you get is an even number it has an even number of uh, carbon atoms so take the next example here c2 so you will get alkanes if you take just one alkane as your starting material you will always get uh, alkanes which have even number of carbon atoms why because even if the original compound had an odd number like one three if it was three carbon atoms let us say you had bromopropane and you made it react with sodium then the two bromines would be removed the three uh, and the two propanes here propane and uh, propyl and propyl would join together to form hexane it would form a hydrocarbon with six carbon atoms, which is an even number. Six is an even number. So you get hydrocarbons which have an even number of uh, at carbon atoms. So here we take an even uh, bromoethane, which already is even number of carbon atoms. So 2C2H5Br plus NaC2H5Br, the two bromines will combine together with sodium to give you sodium bromide. And the two C2H5s will join together. To give you C2H5, C2H5, now it is C4H10, which is butane, right? So that is also even number. Whether you start with a hydrocarbon which has even number of carbon atoms or you start with one which has odd number of hydrocarbon, uh, odd number of carbon atoms, you will always end up, if you start with only one compound, you will always end up with a, uh, with a molecule that is alkane which has an even number of carbon atoms. But... If you start with a mixture of uh, alkyl halides, then you will not get you will not get one individual product. You will get a mixture of products. Let us see here. Let us say I took some bromomethane and some bromoethane, and now I put sodium in it in the presence of dry ether. What will I expect? Whenever I'm taking some this and some that, I'm not taking individual molecules. I'm taking a few grams which may have millions of molecules in it. So what happens when the reaction takes place? Some, some of them will show this reaction because there are so many bromomethanes. And there are so many bromoethanes. So some of the molecules are going to directly bromomethane is going to react with bromomethane to give you ethane. In some cases, you'll have bromoethane and bromoethane giving you butane. But in some cases, you will have bromomethane reacting with and sodium and the other molecule is of bromoethane. One is bromomethane, other is bromoethane. The bromines will be removed, but what you will get now will be propane. In that case, you will get propane CH3, C2H5. CH3, Br, 6Na, 3Br, C2, H5. CH3 and Br, if they are two molecules, you'll get CH3, CH3. If two of these join together, you'll get C2H5, C2H5, which is butane. And if you have one, one molecule, which is bromomethane, and one which is bromoethane, you'll get sodium bromide. But the molecule, the alkane that will be formed will be CH3, C2, H5, which is propane which has odd numbers mind you so you get alkanes containing even number of carbon atoms only if you are taking one alkane uh, what uh, alkyl halide as your reactant if you are using a mixture of even and odd numbers then you will get odd numbered uh, hydrocarbons too but remember whatever products you get they will always have the number of carbon atoms which will be higher than the original molecule that combined. So these were the first two methods of preparation of alkanes. In the next video, we'll be doing preparation of alkanes from carboxylic acids. With this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos on chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.